Welcome to the 10th annual Darndorf Lecture. We're delighted to have several members of the Darndorf family with us as usual. This event really started in 2009 in this room with a tribute which I organized in which Jürgen Habermas, Fritz Stern and I and others uh, paid tribute to Ralph Darndorf on his 80th birthday, um, but knowing very well that he didn't have very long to live. And it was the most extraordinary event. The record of it is outside. It's called On Liberty, the Darndorf Questions. And it's very interesting because it was 2009, just the financial crisis had just hit, and many of the questions that we've been discussing in the conference so far were just rearing their ugly heads. Our colleague Paul Collier said we should introduce a criminal offence of bank slaughter, which gives you a sense of it. Now, at the suggestion of Professor Michael Goering, um, we then set up the Darndorf programme. You will find a brochure about it in your conference packs. It has three main parts, the annual Darndorf lecture and colloquium, Every year we have three competitively selected St. Anthony's students who are called Darndorf Scholars. So we've now had more than 30 Darndorf Scholars and a research agenda and publications. Our first publication also outside was on freedom and diversity. Then we moved on to a big project on free speech. I believe there may even be a book of that title available on all good Amazons. And we've now moved on to the big project on Europe's stories. We are fantastically grateful to all the colleagues and all the students in Oxford and around the world who've worked with us. Without you, it absolutely wouldn't have been possible. We've been talking today about different ideas of we, communities of we. Well, that's certainly one of my we communities. Um, but also, without, it wouldn't have been possible without the support of the foundations, and we have today three who are reporting, uh, supporting our ongoing projects, the Mercator Foundation, represented by Michael Schwarz, the Friedrich Naumann Foundation for Freedom, uh, represented by Professor Karl-Heinz Paquet, and the Zeit Foundation, represented by Professor Michael Goering and Professor Manfred Lahnstein. As you heard in the last session of the conference, if you were here, these are conferences, these are foundations that are much more than just money-giving operations. They have their own intellectual, socio-political agenda. But in thinking how we mark this moment before proceeding to the lecture, we thought particularly of the world, not just of the Zeit Foundation, but also of the newspaper Die Zeit, which was a very important part of Ralph Darndorf's own world and actually of the intellectual and political life of the Federal Republic and, and, and now of United Germany, represented by figures like Marion Dönhoff and Helmut Schmidt. Um, and as I say, the Zeit Foundation has supported us from the very outset. So we're very glad to have with us Professor Manfred Lahnstein, the chair of the Zeit Foundation, but also a finance minister under Helmut Schmidt, a professor of cultural management, someone who's been active in many areas of life, to mark this moment of 10 years of the Darndorf Lecture and Colloquium. Professor Lahnstein. As Timothy has already pointed out, today we are initiating the 10th Darndorf Lecture and Colloquium on behalf of the Zeit Foundation, Professor Michael Göring, Mrs. Dr. Hofmann and myself. Let me wish all of you, all of us, an interesting and mutually enriching time here at St. Anthony's College, where Ralph Darendorf has served as his warden from 1987 to 1997. Timothy Garten Ash, Darendorf's friend and companion, has gathered an impressive group of participants again. Thank you very much, dear Timothy. It is truly a pleasure to be here again. Please allow me a few personal remarks. I have met Ralf Darendorf way back, almost 50 years ago, 
In the summer of 1970, he had become a member of the European Commission in Brussels, where I was working at that time as a chef de cabinet. <coughs> Already at this time, his intellectual brilliance was overwhelming and inspiring. His readiness to work in the details of EC directives and decisions, somewhat less so. <laughs> and that led him to one or two articles which he wrote in the site under a pseudonym, Wieland Europa, and in which he harshly criticized the inevitably bureaucratic aspects of the Brussels institutions. I attacked him publicly. And that brought us into some most interesting discussions. An unforgettable highlight of that period, both of us had been invited to Cambridge for a conference on European issues. However, we spent the evening with Rudi Dutschke at his house. Dutschke, the most important leader of the 1968 German students movement had been shot by a right-wing extremist. He had come to Cambridge with his family to recover and to write his dissertation. Dutschke, with whom Dahlendorf had had the debate of 1968, was visibly suffering. But his head was clear and I had the opportunity to listen to a discussion between two of the leading intellectuals of their time. Came the long years when Ralf Dahrendorf successfully led the London School of Economics. For me, those years were the years of his fruitful <coughs> controversy with Anthony Giddens which also was a controversy over the true heritage of the Fabian Society, the almost forgotten founder of LSE. Now many years later, in 1995, our founder, the founder of the Zeit Foundation, Gertrude Serious, passed away. Dahrendorf had been in contact with him for a long time, and Marion Gräfin Dönhoff, the other spiritus rector of the Zeit, was his personal friend. And that is why we asked him to write our founder's biography. He accepted and presented a masterful work. And when Timothy asked us to support his project, Darendorf Lecture and Colloquium, after Lord Darendorf had passed away in 2009, we did so readily and with pleasure. This pleasure has continued until today and is reinforced by our friends from both the Friedrich Naumann Stiftung for Freedom and, <coughs> excuse me, now I've forgotten the name. Mercator. Ah, the Mercator Foundation. When I prepared this brief introduction, I reread Darendorf's probably last work with a fitting title, Temptations of Illiberalism. Versuchungen der Unfreiheit in German. The author never was a prophet. He thoroughly refrained from stumbling into the fallacies of megatrends and other forms of historicism. Yet he was an excellent observer. I quote him, I do so in my personal translation. I feel the readiness to give up the freedoms of the liberal order. Basic rights, which had to be conquered and defended over a long time, are suddenly questioned. I observe a lot of liberal basic values, which goes almost unnoticed. Too many people are afraid of freedom and liberty. And he continues, until now, the, pub the public intellectuals have made this creeping authoritarianism 
an issue only sporadically and without great effect. Indeed, ladies and gentlemen, ten years later, anti-enlightenment trends poorly disguised as post- or meta-enlightenment can be observed everywhere. The new and all-encompassing infrastructure of the virtual reality in all its forms is supporting <coughs> these trends in a very dangerous way. Twitter and other forms of unending and unnerving talkative blah blah erroneously called social media are superseding the public discourse. Yeah. Democracy and the state of the law are attacked by the deliberate erosion of our institution and the star cult of so-called leaders. And finally, strange, strange theories become acceptable as long as they can be backed by now I have to use the buzzword of the day, powerful narratives. <laughs> Ralf Davenhoff has been spared to experience all these aberrations. One of his answers remains fully valuable, however. He says, the answer is not the thrust for unanimity, let alone the search for a higher objective truth but the creation and the defense of institutions which allow us to define and to tolerate differences without destroying our basic liberties. My question, where are the Darendorfs, or as he would call them, the Erasmians of today? His answers lead us directly into the topic of our agenda, so let us not forget his advice and let us remember that today is the World Day of the Freedom of the Press. Another basic freedom which is at risk and which is attacked not only in faraway Asian or Latin American countries but in the middle of our Europe as well. Thank you very much.